Hello, beautiful. Suave horror. That's a term I made up to describe some of my favorite characters and actors in the history of horror films. Guys like Vincent Price epitomize the term. It's a select group of actors who are able to bring a level of class and sophistication to movies with the way they talk, act, and simply ooze charisma. There's just something about them that makes whatever they are in elevate, and you know that you're going to enjoy it because they are there. There are a few modern actors that can claim that moniker of suave horror, but one of my favorites is the subject of today's What in the Horror Happened To episode. That, ladies and gents, is Jeffrey Combs. No matter what genre he's in, Jeffrey Combs brings with him a masterclass in acting and the ability to turn on the charm or cause you some harm. Madness, monstrous, or the macabre, Jeffrey Combs has brought it to life on the big and small screen, as well as on the stage, and he does it with panache. Let's delve into the midnight dreary to find out what in the horror happened to Jeffrey Combs. Jeffrey Combs was born on September 9, 1954 in Oxnard, California. Growing up, Combs found a love of acting and during his early school life performed in stage productions as well as classes specific to the craft. He would attend the Pacific Conservatory of the Performing Arts and would go on to the University of Washington for their acting program. Yes, he is a Husky and is quite proud of the fact. Before making his way to film and TV, Jeffrey Combs would do a lot of Shakespeare, including working at the Old Globe Theater and the California Shakespearean Company, to name a few of the stages he'd walk. This will come into play later when we talk about Star Trek. Combs would garner his first film work in 1981, but it would be in 1983 when he'd be in the two films which would be in the worlds of sci-fi and horror. First would be Frightmare, a supernatural odd sort of slasher that I honestly recommend checking out if you've not seen it. The film follows a group of theater students who decide to steal the body of a horror actor named Conrad Raskoff, played by fearless vampire killer's lead vamp, Ferdy Mayne. The students spend the night in a mansion partying with the corpse of the horror star and one by one their resurrected actor kills them. The irony of Jeffrey Combs' method of death is not lost on me. The other film that year was The Man with Two Brains. While Combs wasn't a lead in this, his character definitely makes an impression. Ironically, in this film, he's a medical doctor with a penchant for art, I guess would be the word. The film was a very wacky comedy, which featured Steve Martin as a brain surgeon who falls in love with a brain while being married to a gold digger. The brain belongs to the victim of a serial killer, and everyone has some very bizarre last names. The film co-starred the legendary David Warner, as well as Kathleen Turner, and the voice of Sissy Spacek. Yes, you should watch it. It would be in 1985, though, that Jeffrey Combs would land the role that would rocket him to the horror legend status we know and garner him a spot in the black hearts of H.P. Lovecraft fans the world over with Reanimator. Combs would don the spectacles and lab coat of Herbert West, a character who would appear in a series of Lovecraft stories. Here, though, West would be brought into a modern-day setting, flourishing a syringe of neon green liquid with the power to resurrect the dead. Reanimator would become a hybrid of gore, horror, and very black comedy. Combs' performance as Herbert West was a calculating, obsessed scientist who was determined to avenge his mentor, who gives us an eyeful, pun, of a beginning for the film. Combs' as West is an intelligent and unemotional, except when it comes to barely contained rage when someone or some thing threatens his work. As the film progresses, Combs shows no issues of getting his hands dirty or bloody throughout. He and co-star Bruce Abbott as Dan Kane have a fantastic sense of chemistry no pun intended, and everyone in the film is superb. Reanimator would create a friendship and working relationship with the late great Stuart Gordon that would give the world of horror a number of modern classics and have Combs working with co-star Barbara Crampton in a number of films, which would continue to today. The following year would see one of those films released, with Stuart Gordon at the helm and the story taken from the mind of H.P. Lovecraft once again with From Beyond. This entry would find Jeffrey Combs again as a scientist, but this time not the anti-hero that Herbert West would be. Crawford Tillinghast was just very curious and very unlucky in his choice of research partner. Delving into the worlds living alongside our own, Crawford and Dr. Pretorius create a resonator that opens the third eye of those within its range to allow them to see the creatures within those worlds and allows them in. It's head-twistingly weird and very dangerous, something Pretorius discovers early on. 
Barbara Crampton plays Dr. Catherine McMichaels, the psychologist assigned to find out if Crawford is insane and guilty of the grisly death of Pretorius, who turns out to not really be dead, but not truly human anymore either. Fellow horror icon Ken Forey plays Detective Bubba, who is assigned to help McMichaels and investigate the crime and what Crawford is saying happened. Ted Sorrell plays the very gooey Pretorius, and Stuart Gordon manages to do some horrible things to his wife, Carolyn Purdy Gordon, yet again in this movie. From Beyond ramped up the weird and also looked into the darker aspects of human nature unleashed. The resonator's effects on those it touched opened them up to parts of their psyche they may not want to admit to. Crawford became a brain-eating addict, trying to devour, literally, knowledge. Catherine wants to lose control and unleash her more sexual side, eventually losing control of herself to the point she loses her mind. 1987 was a busy year for Jeffrey Combs. He'd appear in an episode of Beauty and the Beast, as well as the action film Cyclone as the ill-fated love interest of Heather Thomas in the Fred Olin Ray-directed motorcycle flick. He'd also co star opposite Yvonne DiCarlo and Deborah Ferentino in the John Carl Buechler directed and Charles Band produced Cellar Dweller about the demonic spirits released by Combs comic book artist Colin Childress. This would be one of a number of films produced by Band that Combs would appear in as well, having started with Reanimator. In 1988, Combs would appear in another Fred Olin Ray feature, The Phantom Empire, and in the lost entry in the Pulse Pounder short films by Charles Band, The Evil Clergyman. The film wasn't available for a very long time, but was finally found in 2011 and restored, with The Evil Clergyman getting a release on DVD the following year. Combs reunited with Barbara Crampton and David Gale from Reanimator in the film, with Gale playing playing a very, very creepy rat with a man's face. Combs is the clergyman of the title, a man named Jonathan. Crampton plays his love interest who is mourning as Jonathan is supposedly dead, but seems to haunt her still, and she's quite happy to let him. In 1989, four years after donning the lab coat for the first film, Jeffrey Combs would once again slip on the character of Herbert West alongside Bruce Abbott and David Gill as the unstoppable head of Dr. Hill in Bride of Reanimator. Taking aspects from some of the chapters of the Herbert West stories by Lovecraft, Bride unapologetically is inspired by The Bride of Frankenstein, with Brian Usna in the director's chair as well as producing. The film sees Herbert tempting Dan Kane back to the dark side with the chance to bring back to life, literally, the heart of his his dead fiance Megan in the body of a woman created by the two scientists. Kathleen Kinmont stars as not only the iconic bride, but also the unlucky patient of Dan's named Gloria. Bride of Reanimator would see some amazing effects from masters of the craft, including KMB Effects, Screaming Mad George, and Magical Media Industries. It embraced even more the absurd and over the top nature of Reanimator's black comedy and gore. Herbert's weirdness is also up, and Jeffrey Combs once again knocks it out of the park. The same year that Bride of Reanimator was released, Jeffrey Combs would appear in the episode Love Stinks of the anthology series Freddy's Nightmares, the TV series spinoff from the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Combs plays a pizza cook who has a very Sweeney Todd attitude when it comes to ingredients. The 90s would see Jeffrey very busy in multiple film and TV projects. This would start with another collaboration with Stuart Gordon in the Edgar Allan Poe story, The Pit and the Pendulum. The film has Lance Henriksen as the sadistic Torquemada in Lust with a Baker's Wife. The movie is a love letter to the Roger Corman films that were inspired by Poe's work, but with a distinctly Gordon feel. It would be part of the Full Moon Entertainment lineup with Charles and Albert Band producing. It would also include the extra gravitas of Oliver Reed. In 1991, Jeffrey would appear opposite Mark Hamill in The Giver, the live action feature film based off the very popular manga series. Combs would be playing Dr. East, get it? A scientist who has a particularly interesting ending. There's a whole online theory about East actually being Herbert West's brother who was trying to live up to his sibling and using a different name. That same year, he joined forces with Charles Band again for the sequel to the sleeper hit Trancers with Trancers 2, The Return of Jack Death. This time Combs would play one of the bad guys alongside Richard Lynch. Helen Hunt returned to the franchise with the always epic Tim Thomerson as Jack. In 1992, Jeffrey Combs would film one of my favorite movies in his library with Dr. Mordred. In this full moon feature, also directed by Charles Band, along with his father Albert, in this film Combs is every bit the hero as he takes on an evil Brian Thompson. Mordred is a wizard who has an awesome apartment and who protects the earth from evil forces. He even has a raven named Edgar Allen and a great costume with a cape 
and a magic medallion. If this all sounds familiar, it's because it was supposed to be a Doctor Strange film. Charles Band actually got the rights from Marvel to make a live action Doctor Strange, but due to delays in pre-production, the rights reverted back. After having put in all the work on the script and prepping to shoot, Band and Full Moon decided to tweak the script so they wouldn't be sued and made their own comic book superhero with Jeffrey Combs. But this wouldn't be the last time Jeffrey Combs would become a comic book character. In 1993, Combs would co-star in the futuristic jail film Fortress as D-Day, opposite Christopher Lambert and Kurtwood Smith. Once again, the film would have him joining forces with Stuart Gordon. The film has grown into a cult classic and had a wide theatrical release via Dimension Films. That same year, Jeffrey Combs would step into the shoes of one of the two very important authors to be a part of his career. He would become H.P. Lovecraft in the fantastic Lovecraft anthology Necronomicon. This would be another pairing with Brian Yuzna. Lovecraft a la Combs would be the story that would connect all the stories. I absolutely love this flick as it reminded me of some of the old Amicus productions. It was also neat to see Combs' Lovecraft. In 1994, Combs would co-star in the violent love story Love in a 45. He'd also enter the land of Lovecraft again as part of the Charles Band produced and Full Moon Entertainment release, Lurking Fear, alongside Hellraiser alum Ashley Lawrence. It would also be around this time that Combs would start his association with one of the biggest franchises in science fiction history, Star Trek. In Deep Space Nine, Combs would portray three different characters, one of them, Wayun, in multiple clones of the alien. Wayun just happens to be one of my favorite Star Trek characters of all time, and it's because of the way Combs brings him to life. Wayun's a charmer, and that whole suave sense of style comes through here in spades, but Wayun is also a dangerous player in a game of war he plans on winning. Combs' performance can flip the switch from smiling and muse to, I'm going to end you with a snap of my fingers, in an instant. Along with Wayun, Combs would also play the Ferengi Brunt in DS9. In 1996, Combs hit the big screen again in another of my favorite films, this time under director Peter Jackson in one of his entries into the horror genre. Before The Lord of the Rings, there was The Frighteners, which starred Michael J. Fox as a con man exorcist for hire. The thing is, he can actually see and communicate with the dead, and the hauntings he's paid to stop are actually being done by his ghostly partners. When a serial killer starts murdering people mysteriously, Frank gets involved and is followed by Combs' FBI agent, Milton Dammers. Dammers is a broken and extremely weird character, and Combs is fantastic in the part. You have to get these ashes to consecrated ground in order to destroy the forces of evil. It was in 1997, though, where Combs would start his association with DC Comics by voicing the Scarecrow in the new Batman adventures in the episode Never Fear. This would continue in other roles in both video games and series. My favorite of these would be, of course, his role as The Question, which would start with an appearance in Justice League Unlimited, an anti-hero, but he's still a hero. But he'd tackle the Superman villain Brainiac in Injustice 2, and would also voice Kite Man in Batman the Brave and the Bold. Oh, you cannot be serious! In 1999, Combs would slip into a Vincent Price-inspired film, but not as the Vincent Price type of role, in House on Haunted Hill, a remake of the Price movie. Combs would be the creepy surgeon and Dr. Richard Benjamin Vanicut, who would continue to haunt the house along with his victims. In 2000, he'd appear as the character Pink in Star Trek Voyager, adding to his character list. The following year would begin his run on Star Trek Enterprise, his fan favorite Shran, as well as Krim. These roles would be part of the grand total of eight different characters that Combs would play across the Star Trek universe. And this would lead to one of the most absolutely awesome experiences I've ever seen at a sci-fi convention. Remember when I said that Jeffrey Combs was a Shakespearean trained actor? Well, he and his fellow DS9 villains, Mark Alamo and Casey Biggs, would join forces for a fantastic performance called What Shakespeare Left Behind. The performance featured the three classically trained actors doing scenes from the Bard's works, and even including a special section where each of them performed as one of Shakespeare's famous villains. At the end, they all come together to remind everyone of all the phrases we use every day that come from Shakespeare, and to let us know we were quoting him. How much impact Shakespeare has on our lives today. Jeffrey Combs started the 2000s hard with horror, entering the indie comic realm with Faust Love of the Damned in 2001. The film is based on the gory and in-your-face comic Faust by Tim Vigil and David Quinn. It would also be another pairing with director Brian Usna. 
Over the next few years, Combs would appear in The Attic Expeditions, Fear.com, as well as a number of indie horror films like Satanic, alongside Acre Scrim, Hammerhead Shark Frenzy, and Blackwater Valley Exorcism. During this run, he would also revisit two popular roles. The first would be in 2003 when Combs would rejoin Brian Nesna as Herbert West in Beyond Reanimator, the only entry in the franchise sans Dan Kane. This entry would be a bizarre affair, with Herbert still managing to continue his experiments within a prison after he's charged with murder because of an attack by one of his reagent subjects. Howard Phillips, get it, witnesses his sister die at the hands of that subject and becomes obsessed with the reagent and becomes a doctor years later, winding up at the facility West is incarcerated in. Jason Barry stars as Howard with actress Elsa Pataki as a reporter who goes through, let's say, some changes. This would also have the distinction of being the first reanimator film with a music video. Never forget to reanimate your feet. Dead, I'll be your reanimator. I've got the way to bring you to life. It was in 2005 that the 4400 would take to the airwaves. The series would follow the mysterious return of 4,400 people who have disappeared over decades starting in the 40s. None of them have aged in this time and don't remember what happened to them. Combs played Dr. Kevin Burkhoff, who is key to the series plot regarding special abilities and the serum that can create them. He also has a romantic storyline with Tess, one of the returned and played by genre fave Summer Glau. Kevin and Tess would appear in multiple episodes of the series. In 2006, Combs would step into the role of yet another horror writing legend in Stuart Gordon's entry of Masters of Horror, The Black Cat. Combs would transform himself into Edgar Allan Poe in the episode, which Gordon and Dennis Paoli would co-write with Gordon directing. The story follows Poe, who is desperate to have a success, and finds himself being tormented by a black cat who turns his life into a living hell. Jeffrey Combs was uncanny in his performance, and, at least for me, is one of the best performances of an actor as Poe. It was so good that Gordon and Combs would wind up joining forces to bring Poe to life on the stage in an epic one-man show where Combs appears as Poe during an evening with an audience called Nevermore, an evening with Edgar Allan Poe. The performance is jaw-dropping, and you'd swear that the actor was possessed by the writer's spirit. Combs interacts with the audience and actually recites works of Poe without a script or book around. The play was a massive hit and had its run in Hollywood extended a number of times and would be performed in Baltimore, Maryland, where Poe is buried. Combs kept busy with multiple appearances on TV and in films throughout the early 2000s, and in 2010 would appear in the world of Scooby-Doo in Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated as Professor Hatecraft. A copy of Hatecraft's book. Chargar Gothicon, the beast that hath no name. An homage to H.P. Lovecraft and plays opposite the late great writer Harlan Ellison, who played himself in the episode. In 2012, Combs appeared in the horror film Would You Rather as the brilliantly evil Shepard Lambrick. Would You Rather takes the game's name and makes the game into a twisted volley of choices for the participants, with the winner getting the thing they need the most, but at the cost of their own conscience. Found our first opportunity to award some money tonight. Combs would say in an interview, to get into the mindset of a character this evil and manipulative, he'd look back into the history of men like Hitler, who epitomized that sort of mentality. That same year, Combs would take on a new type of Living Dead, at least for him, with Night of the Living Dead 3D, reanimation, get it? Alongside Andrew Divoff. In 2017, animation would be a big part of Combs' acting roles, thanks to a voice made for creating iconic characters. Some standouts during this time were the Howard Lovecraft animated movies, with Combs appearing in Howard Lovecraft and the Undersea Kingdom. Dr. Henry Armitage, AM, PhD. Howard Lovecraft, K-I-D. And as H.P. Lovecraft, again, in Howard Lovecraft and the Kingdom of Madness. He joined the world of the Transformers as well as Ratchet in Transformers Prime and the Transformers Prime Beast Hunters film Predacons Rising. Doctor to doctor, I must say, your contribution to the Decepticon cause is very much appreciated. In 2019, Jeffrey Combs would star in the episode segment of Creepshow on Shudder entitled Bad Wolf Down, which saw Nazis coming face to face with werewolves. Combs played the Nazi commander who finds himself biting off more than he can chew, or maybe he's the one who's bitten and chewed. We'll let you figure that out. 
This year, we'll see Combs adding to his repertoire of DC characters he's played with Batman The Doom That Came to Gotham. The animated film is based off the Elseworlds comic of the same name that was written by Mike Magnolia of Hellboy fame and Richard Pace. It's heavily influenced by H.P. Lovecraft's work and has Batman taking on the dark forces trying to destroy Gotham while also taking on some of the familiar villains we all know and love. One of those is Combs' Kirk Langstrom, aka Man Bat, who has appeared throughout numerous stories in the DC Universe and in the world of Batman in particular. He's one of my favorites and I couldn't think of a better voice to give him. Jeffrey Combs is simply a legend when it comes to the genre world. He's embraced the realms of horror and sci-fi and with Within them, he's created a library of roles that range from romantic, horrific, sinister, and sympathetic. He's an actor who was trained in the classics and has since created a few classics himself. He's unique in that I can't think of many actors who have acted in stories by authors like Lovecraft and then gone on to play two of the authors themselves in separate projects. He truly is one of the modern genre legends in the pantheon of the greats, bringing to life the deeper meanings covered in blood in a film like Reanimator or the underlying morality tales of some of the best science fiction that Star Trek has to offer. Jeffrey Combs brings the stories to life. I gave him life. <laughs>